Hi, I'm Luke Searville. Welcome to another episode of Meet the Gaffer. Today's episode is for those who are looking to become a PA, a production assistant. If that's you, great. Keep watching. If you're looking for lighting content, my apologies. I'll see you on the next episode. Because from here on out, you're going to be like that know-it-all kid in class who becomes so bored, you become a nuisance. <laughs> right. So, you want to be a PA. Being a PA is like getting in on the ground floor, the so-called mailroom of the film industry. My first job was as a PA. I worked on a commercial for a soft, spreadable butter. We were on a farm north of San Francisco, where the happy cows live. And I had to run back and forth to the city, pick people up, make last-minute purchases. And that was all before cell phones. My first union job was also as a PA, helping the craft service people on the Richard Donner film Radio Flyer. I never saw the film. But the thing I remember is how we didn't have any carts, not even a magliner, for the huge bags of ice and cases upon cases of soft drinks. It was probably the hardest few weeks of work I had back in those early days until I was introduced to 4 out cable as an electric. Come to think of it, I really only had two jobs as a PA, but those jobs were the gateway. And that could be true for you too. Most people don't have any training before working as a PA, which totally works, but some training would be better, right? Whether you go to film school or not, what you may be asked to do as a PA is all over the map. If you throw yourself at it, you'll pick it up, like a version of boot camp. It's a proving ground to see if you have the emotional and physical fortitude to make a go of it in this crazy business. Now, you can stumble your way through and find people who will be willing to whip you into shape and or mentor you. But a while back, I was approached by a few folks who have put together an online curriculum to bring PAs up to speed on what to expect on set. Kind of like an orientation. And they've done a solid job. I was telling some fellow gaffers about this course and one of them asked if the curriculum included notes on how best to work with grip and electric, G and E. I mentioned this to the developers of the course and they asked, would I be willing to add that content and maybe pitch their course at the same time? I said, sure. So they came up with this intro video that I'm gonna play. It introduces you to who they are and what they're offering. The video also gives you a taste of their style. After that, I'll give you some notes about working with G&E. And to reiterate, if you're not looking to be a PA, then I don't know why you're still watching. Here we go. Okay, next item of business, Luke has us to shoot a short video about the course that he can add some information on how PAs can work with Grip and Electric safely. Okay. Yeah, I mean, that seems like a great idea. I really think first, we just need to explain to people what the Power PA course is. The Power PA course helps our students get to any position in the film business by starting as a production assistant. And let's make it clear to this online video modules. Right, right. I mean, basically the course is a series of video modules that you can watch individually or binge on them all at once. After you've studied all the videos, there's a test. After you pass that test, your eligible gets your listing in the Power PA directory. The Power PA directory is where producers, assistant directors, production coordinators, anybody who's going to hire a production assistant is going to go find you and hire you. We know that nobody becomes a production assistant because they want to be a production assistant. You want to be a director of photography or a producer or director, any number of different things. And starting as a production assistant has traditionally been the best way to get to that role. Coming up the ladder really gets you into knowing the different departments and understanding how everything works. The only problem is there's no training for PAs typically, and there's certainly no on-the-job training. You just show up on set and everyone expects you to know how the walkies work and what all the terms mean and what you can touch and what you can't touch. And when you get it wrong, they yell at you, even though no one ever taught you that thing in the first place. And these are the kinds of things that we go over in the course that really help people just land into the business. 
You know what we haven't talked about is us. The fact that the course is taught by working film professionals. True, and that we all started as PAs. I actually started as a production assistant twice. Once when I was about 20, and again when I was about 40. By starting in the industry two times at different phases of life, I just really learned a lot and got a really good perspective that I used to start my own production company. And I still use all the lessons that I learned as a PA from both times that I started. After I PA'd for about a year and a half, the industry professionals and the keys were discovering me and they invited me into their departments. And that was a great experience to like really start to move up. And now I have a rental company that's called Go For News Production Rentals. Then I started teaching classes because I got the industry professionals were saying, hey, look, can you train some people? When I started as a PA, I knew that I wanted to work in Griffin Electric, so I, I worked towards that goal uh, while still doing my job as a PA to the best of my ability. Over the years, I've worked with a lot of PAs who did a great job and were stellar, right? But I also saw a lot that were mistreated because they didn't know some of the simple things to do. They needed a little bit of guidance and they weren't always given that guidance. So I help them whenever I'm able to, but you know, when I'm on set, most of the time I'm trying to do my job and not get in trouble. So that's why I'm really excited that we've been able to create the Power PA course and I can help many more PAs find their way in the film industry. We each come from a different perspective. So we're not just teaching you how to work on one particular kind of job. We're gonna teach you how to work on all the different kinds of jobs that you're gonna wind up working on. I mean, that's, that's as clear as it can get. Yeah, I think so. Let's keep it short and sweet and then let people come to the website where they can learn more. One last thing though, I think we should give Luke's people a discount code. You cool with that? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, you always put it up on screen. Yeah. Fair enough, let's flip it over to Luke now. Okay, now you've heard the pitch for the Power PA course. It's just basic training for a newbie. That's you. There are other courses out there, but for the cost of a PA day rate, this should be totally worthwhile. And if you use the discount code, you save a few bucks. All right, now let's talk about a topic that is near and dear to my heart, passing on practical knowledge to next-gen filmmakers. That's what a lot of this channel is about. Some people want to treat this line of work like an exclusive club and make it really hard to get in that club. They may have been given a helping hand themselves, but they are not gonna help anyone else. To me, that's nuts. I want to be surrounded by knowledgeable people on set. It's safer and everything runs more smoothly. That said, there are different ways to learn. Talking can get in the way of doing. There's a reason we chose jobs that aren't at a desk. We talk while we walk. We may stand in a circle for a few minutes, but then we have our marching orders and we get going. As a PA, you may not even really understand half the words being used, but there usually isn't time for a thorough explanation right then. So make a verbal note on your phone or whatever, and then ask questions later, like at lunch. If you're on a union job, I can't think of a good reason for you to be doing anything grip or electric. Larger film sets are very segmented and hierarchical for a reason. If you stay in your lane, everything goes more smoothly. That's not to say departments don't work together. Of course they do. But it's a dance that you don't know. You will learn it, but don't assume you know all the moves because you've read a book or watched YouTube videos. If you're a PA, you are literally a nondescript assistant. So a more traditional etiquette, a respect of roles, if you will, should inform your actions. To that end, the next six points may sound a little harsh. Number one, don't touch anything that belongs to grip or electric. I'll say it again. Don't touch anything that belongs to grip or electric. Number two, if someone has asked you to go get an apple box, for example, or a C-stand or a sandbag, whatever it is, even if you've gone through training, and you feel proud that you know what it is. Don't just find it, pick it up, and deliver it. Don't. Don't do it. Find a grip or an electric, preferably best grip, best electric, and ask if you may have whatever it is you're looking for. Because if you don't, 
you might as well be a drug mule. And you're in just as much trouble as the person asking you to do the dirty work. Yeah. Number three, when someone in G&E is working intensely, lifting something heavy in the middle of, say, a menace arm rig or hooking up electrical, take a minute before you launch into whatever you need to say, whether it's for a lunch order, handing them a new walkie battery, or asking them to donate to this week's raffle. The people in G&E are often in the middle of activities that require concentration and might even be dangerous if not properly executed. So pick your point of distraction carefully. One of the earliest Meet the Gaffer episodes, number six, is a little dark visually, but it goes over the basic five traits of what it takes to be a freelancer. These traits are especially true for you because you're starting out. Soak up the wisdom of those more experienced. Just don't try to get too chummy too quickly. Make it through some hard jobs first. Earn the right to be familiar. Attitude, aptitude, anticipation, attention to detail, and a touch of assertiveness will all come in handy. So study up. This is number five. Don't stand in doorways. Keep your eyes open in all directions. If someone is coming through with something heavy, don't wait to be asked to move. And lastly, when they call rap and you hear someone say, go collect all the sandbags, refer back to number one and number two. Unless you ask and someone from G&E says, okay, don't do it. Prepare to be rebuffed. And no means no. We all have stories of times that helpful PAs started methodically taking bags off stands that were properly counterweighted until the bags were removed. I just stopped a PA the other week from doing that very thing. Look, listen, learn. That's my short list. Hey, I'm looking forward to working with you on set. We all have to start somewhere and I'm happy to help. Just learn to read the room, work hard, and we'll all get along famously. Thanks for watching. Check out the Power PA course, and we'll see you again next time. The reason I took the more hardline, old school, crotchety old man approach is because it's kind of like teaching a child about the stovetop. It's good to have a modicum of fear attached to danger. Film sets have a lot of potential hazards. Until I know your level of respect for danger, I don't really want you touching anything. That's why unions have training. For non-union, it's on the job, but it's not internet instant. It takes time for someone like myself to walk you through proper, safe ways of doing things. It can happen, but respect the timing. All right. See you on set.